the housing market is partying like 1999. Now with active media cheerleading, just saw an article about a house in suburbs of DC with 88 offers, mostly all cash. One in the SF Chronicle about a house in suburban Sacramento fielding 122 offers. Sold in 3 hours. When has the media not cheered house buying? It is one of their biggest clients. Thank you media, let's just keep pumping the insanity bubble up more. Buy NFTs now while they are cheap, buy cryptos now while they are cheap, ditto, real estate, ditto stocks, cause the arrow only goes from lower left to upper right, ever. Hey I have some digitized horse manure I like to put on the NFT market, anyone interested? It's absolutely rare and one of a kind, there will never be the exact same pile of horse manure like this pile again, ever. Maybe this is why houses are selling for insane prices, they are the underlying asset, in a CFD. If the house prices don't go up, the margin calls can start. This would explain offers in the thousands over asking and the over a hundred offers on a house. Hedge funds can afford this if they are not paying the insurance premium on a CDs. Anything to keep the prices up. For sure real estate agents would collaborate. The housing market right now is like the market for Bitcoin. The people who hold the supply are not selling, in the case of housing, because of a combination of they still need places to live and why would they sell when prices are only going to go up. And in the case of Bitcoin, because so many of the early adopters are so blinded by greed that they will never sell and realize profits. So inventory for both is very thin. Of course, the stock market, and really any market, functions the same way. That's why it annoys the hell out of me when people say, the S&P is worth $45 trillion, or whatever, implying that all of it can be sold for $45 trillion one day. Obviously, there isn't enough cash in the world for that, so if volume picked up significantly, prices would plummet. I suspect that is what is going to happen with the housing market once foreclosures are allowed again. It's amazing the home price increases have been allowed to go this far without a serious revolt. Instead of anger, the response has been, FOMO fear of missing out. Central banks have abused their discretion and their mandates. The job of a central bank is to provide liquidity in times of crisis, not function as an unelected treasury administration with power to tax via inflation, thereby reallocating wealth from savers to spenders, renters to homeowners, prudent to speculators, and from young to old. There is no housing bubble unless it bursts or crashes. The housing bubble exists only in hindsight. I don't think the Fed would ever raise rates. Before raising rates, they need to taper down the bond purchase. Will be interesting where the market would be when the Fed and mortgage companies increase the rates. Mortgages at 6% would result in a reduction in value and price. Wouldn't that equally upset homeowners who are no longer valued? These are so strange times. Nutty as an acorn tree. Wait and see is about all we can do as there is no way to fight the system. I expect to see people get rather upset when their $900,000 home is only valued at $690,000. The Fed will have to pay for that. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Remember the state old days when housing was treated more like a consumption item, shelter, that generally appreciated at roughly the overall rate of inflation? Me too. Current housing market is a Frankenstein monster of a market that is being used chiefly as a speculative investment and secondarily as shelter. It is behaving in line with so many other current bubble markets that we know so well, and that is fueled by all the loose money sloshing around the economy. When housing at all falls down from its frothy air pocket the sound will be deafening. Poor suckers that got enticed in at the top nosebleed prices will be hurt the most. Housing crisis 2.0 worse than 2008 recession. A Bloomberg article years ago titled, Wall Street unlocks profits from distress with rental revolution. Looked behind the curtain and pointed out that a great deal of this housing recovery that has driven the average home price up 30% since 2012 has been the result of Wall Street hedge funds buying in bulk foreclosed houses in order to turn them into rentals. Like many people, I find it totally objectionable these deals were bundled and offered in such a way that allowed big business to crowd the average American out of the housing market. In parts of the country, cash fleeing China and other troubled countries has flowed into the market pumping up prices. 
These type of situations create a questionable base for higher home prices when we consider the low end of the market is driven by Fannie, Freddie, and the Federal Housing Administration all insuring 3.5% down payments from borrowers that lack substantial collateral. History has shown that such special financing simply encourages people to rush out and buy homes they cannot afford. It is important to remember that low interest rates do not necessarily bring about quality growth or prosperity. Decades of slow growth in Japan has proven this. One of the sad accomplishments of current Fed policy is that low interest rates often do not create all that much new demand but simply moves what does exist forward. To make the situation worse the Federal Housing Administration is busy issuing and guaranteeing risky mortgages written by thinly capitalized non-banks. In 2012 the large Wall Street banks represented over 65% of Federal Housing Administration backed loans, today that number has cratered. Even they have realized loaning money to people that won't pay it back is a recipe for disaster. America is preparing for a replay of the 2008 housing crisis. We are even seeing restrictions raised on borrowers with past foreclosures in a housing market that may drop 20% when this Fed Wall Street bubble pops. A strong appetite among foreign investors for office buildings, apartments, malls and other real estate has in part fueled the long-running bull market in U.S. commercial property. Now, amid a maturing property market cycle and rising uncertainties in geopolitics and the global economy, this is housing bubble 2.0. And market shift. Realtor foreign investors have sold more U.S. commercial real estate than they bought in a quarter for the first time since 2013. With the remaining inventory they will be gracious enough to rent the properties at top dollar. This has been skewing the foreclosure numbers for a while and limiting supply to keep prices up. Recall that in the Great Recession, the stimulus of low rates was countered by a tightening of lending standards as lenders feared rising default risk. Ultimately, the collapsing system was bailed out as a consequence. Even the rules regarding insolvency had to be changed since many financial organizations were technically insolvent. Too many non-performing loans, bad derivative bets, overleveraging, etc. These clowns are addicted to money printing. The next hint of a downturn, and they're going to send out even more. Who'd thunk Maxine Waters and company would ever be in control of a country's currency? This lady couldn't even count change from a $20 bill. We're doomed. Honestly, even if the money was borrowed instead of printed from nothing, it would still be bad. Counting government spending into GDP is like embezzling from your company and counting that as income. Miss Waters is an example of what you get when you have a universal franchise. Local governments love the constantly rising housing prices because the tax assessment keeps going up every year, bringing in more property taxes without having to raise property tax rates. This helps hide much of their fiscal mismanagement. To stimulate homeownership, they reduce the mortgage, which increases housing prices within a few months, which makes it harder for anybody in the future to buy a home. It's rewarding one generation of home buyers to the detriment of another generation. Any government that does not condones this type of generational theft is beholden to special interests and does not legitimately serve its population. Anyone buying a home now at these inflated prices will lose money over the next few years unless we go into hyperinflation which is unlikely. Housing affordability has now reached a peak and the only direction from here on is south. When interest rates normalize the house payments will go up for the same price home which will result in a decline in the market, selling price of most homes. This happened in 1981 and 1982 in Capitol Hill a very desirable area in the swamp, and will happen again nationwide. Many homeowners will be underwater just like they were during the GFC but for a different reason. Banks are not doing what they did in 2005, 2006, 2007. They would rather not make these loans. There is no pressure on appraisers to hit values and make deals. Those who think this is like 2005, 2006, 2007 are way off. The lemmings are heading for slaughter but they need to look in the mirror before shifting the blame to someone else. And the economy-destructive 2008 rate rise, Occupy Wall Street and the brutal housing collapse has been understood by the Federal Reserve. Rate hikes leading to a housing price collapse and followed by a heavy recession will not be fomented by central banks' interest rate hikes. Printing press going burr to inflate assets while many in society will be thrown under the inflationary bus but not homeowners. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe.
and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.